For the first time in its history, the Philippine Navy is preparing to move below the surface. After two decades of focusing on frigates, patrol vessels, and maritime aircraft, Manila's naval modernization is now turning toward the final and most complex domain of sea power, the undersea world. The goal is not to build a fleet of prestige submarines for display, but to create a silent layer of deterrence that completes the country's sea denial architecture. What began with the Jose Rizal class frigates and expanded through Wildcat helicopters, Brahma's coastal batteries and C-295 maritime patrol aircraft is now entering a new phase, one that demands stealth, endurance, and a kind of deterrence that can only come from what cannot be seen. In late 2025, Fincantieri of Italy and Germany's Tyson Krupp Marine Systems jointly offered Manila a partnership to supply two U-212 Near Future Submarines, or NFS, as the centerpiece of the country's long-envisioned Philippine submarine program. This proposal, backed by training assistance and industrial cooperation, represents the first credible pathway for the Philippines to acquire an indigenous submarine capability before the end of the decade. Both companies are among Europe's most experienced builders of conventional submarines, and their U-212 lineage has already proven its quietness and survivability with the Italian and German navies. The Philippine Department of National Defense has acknowledged ongoing evaluation of the offer and is aligning it with the Navy's long-term modernization framework known as SAIL Plan 2040. The logic behind the move is strategic rather than symbolic. Surface ships, even the modern Jose Rizal class, are inherently visible and trackable. Airborne surveillance with C-295 patrol aircraft and Scan Eagle drones provides situational awareness. But once a conflict breaks out, only submarines can deliver persistence and surprise. For an archipelago like the Philippines, which faces constant encroachment in the West Philippine Sea, the ability to monitor adversary movements underwater and threaten their logistics routes is a necessary evolution of its defensive posture. Submarines allow a weaker navy to impose uncertainty on a stronger opponent. Every time a rival task group sails near Palawan or the Spratly Islands, the question becomes, is there a Philippine submarine nearby? According to the latest modernization reports, the navy is already preparing the infrastructure required to support such a capability. Two new naval bases in Subic Bay and Mindanao are being developed as submarine support and training hubs. Satellite imagery and project documents show dredging for deep water berths, construction of maintenance workshops, and underground facilities for mission planning and secure communications. The United States and Japan have both expressed willingness to assist in technical design and logistics support. This physical foundation marks a shift from the Philippines' traditional reliance on leased or temporary facilities to the establishment of a durable submarine home port network within its own territory. Sail Plan 2040, the Navy's long-term development document, outlines a gradual transition from a coastal defense force into a multi-domain navy capable of operations above, on, and below the sea. Within Horizon 3 of the Armed Forces Modernization Program, 2023-2028, submarines are identified as the final and most technically demanding capability to be introduced. The vision is to have a small but potent undersea force by 2035, two to three boats with trained crews, full maintenance autonomy, and integration into the country's maritime command network. 
Rather than pursuing quantity, the Navy's approach is to secure quality systems that can operate as both deterrent and training platforms. The U-212 NFS fits this philosophy well. Designed for long endurance in confined or shallow waters, it uses an air-independent propulsion system that enables nearly three weeks of submerged operations without snorkeling. Its fuel cell technology produces almost no detectable heat or noise signature. The submarine's advanced combat system fuses sonar, radar, and electronic intelligence data, enabling the crew to track surface ships and submarines at ranges previously impossible for smaller navies. It can carry heavy torpedoes, mines, and even anti-ship missiles, offering multiple layers of engagement options. For a country defending a vast maritime zone, this kind of endurance and stealth translates directly into deterrence. Training is already being planned as part of the partnership proposal. Italian and German naval academies are expected to receive the first batches of Filipino sailors as early as 2026. With practical sea time, conducted aboard operational U-212 submarines in La Spezia and Kiel. Beyond crew training, Manila is negotiating industrial participation agreements to give local shipyards experience in maintenance and minor component production. These steps are modest but crucial, ensuring that the future Philippine submarine fleet will not rely entirely on foreign contractors for every repair or refit. Yet the obstacles are real. Submarines are complex and expensive. A pair of U-2 Octo NFS boats could cost more than 1.5 billion euros, not including base infrastructure and training. Operating costs are high, and the country must build a cadre of technicians, engineers, and logisticians to sustain the fleet. The environment itself adds difficulty. Tropical humidity, high salinity, and rough monsoon seasons stress both hardware and crews. But these are not insurmountable challenges. Other regional navies with comparable resources, Indonesia and Vietnam among them, have successfully established small submarine forces through gradual investment and foreign training partnerships. The Philippines can follow the same trajectory if political commitment remains steady. In operational terms, submarines will complete the country's layered defense network. Information gathered by C-295s and Scan Eagle drones can feed into submarine targeting. Coastal radar stations and BrahMos batteries can receive underwater queuing data. And the Rizal-class frigates can coordinate anti-submarine patrols in tandem. In wartime, a submarine lurking in the Sulu Sea or near Scarborough Shoal can silently observe hostile movements, report back through secure links, and, if necessary, strike. Even in peacetime, the mere possibility of a hidden presence forces adversaries to behave more cautiously. A classic deterrence effect achieved at minimal overt escalation. Politically, the program carries symbolic weight. A functioning submarine fleet signals that the Philippines is no longer confined to surface sovereignty patrols, but is entering a higher tier of naval competence. It also deepens cooperation with partners like Italy, Germany, Japan, and the United States, all of whom have a stake in regional maritime stability. Diplomatically, Manila must frame this step as defensive and transparent, part of its modernization roadmap rather than a provocation, to reassure neighbors and sustain international support. The move beneath the waves is more than an arms purchase. It is a declaration of maturity. 
For decades, the Philippine Navy was seen as a coastal force limited to showing the flag. The future submarine program suggests a new reality, a Navy that can observe, decide, and, if required, act in silence. Beneath the blue surface of the West Philippine Sea, a new deterrent layer is taking shape. When the first Philippine submarine slips quietly from Subic Bay into the deep, it will carry not just torpedoes, but the nation's intent to see without being seen, to strike only if necessary, and to ensure that its flag endures where no enemy can touch it. <laughs>